Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Jelani and before I even begin today's video, I'd just like to take some time to wish everyone who's writing the ad math exam tomorrow good luck on that exam and that I truly wish and hope that you're able to secure a very high mark and be on your way to securing a grade 1. Now, I also would like to say an extreme thank you to the small few of you all who've been watching my videos. Um, hopefully, I've been able to help you out and truly improve your performance ahead of this exam and I want to continue that with this last video today. It's on circle geometry, one of the more crazier topics, well not crazier but it could be a little diff um, difficult. Uh, it was certainly my most difficult topic when I was doing hard math. So I want to go through that topic today. This question is from the May 2016 exam. And let's just get a feel for it, see how they ask things and, you know, the different formulas we have to use and all those nice things. Let's just, let's just deal with this question and see how it treats us. So, it starts off by saying the points M3,2 and N, neg 1,4 are the ends of a diameter of a circle C. Determine the equation of the circle C. So they just gave us two points and then said, find the equation of this circle. All right. Now, like I said in some of my previous videos, anytime you have the option to draw a sketch in a question in ad math, you should definitely draw that sketch. It will 99% of the times improve your visualization of the question and your understanding of the question to help you solve it. So I'm going to drop a circle here. Let's make it a little bigger. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put what we are given in this question on the circle. So they give us the two points M and N. So let's just put them down. Now it's a sketch. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just about visualizing. So let's put M down here, three comma two, and N, I'll put it somewhere up here, negative one comma four. And what they said is that these points are the ends of a diameter, which means that they, there's a third point that the question is sort of secretly telling us about which is the center of the circle. And the two points, M and N, the line connecting them passes through that center. Now, all of these things, hopefully you know, I mean, knowing about the diameter of a circle is, is primary school level stuff, but it's so easy to miss that if you didn't draw a sketch because your mind just might not, you know, it might not click in your brain for it to, to jump out in your in, in your working. So that's why you need the sketch because the sketch helps you to see things a little better. So now when they ask us to determine the equation of the circle, now we have some nice visualization here to work with. So let's start off answering this question by first writing out the general form of the equation of the circle. That general form looks like this, right? It's X minus F squared plus y minus g squared and that is equal to r squared and what's special about this formula is that the f and the g are the coordinates for the center of the circle and the r is the radius And we could get all that information from that sketch over on the side there. So let's first get the easiest one in my opinion, which is the center of the circle. Because if this entire black line here is a diameter, that means that the center of the circle is the midpoint of that diameter. And we all know the equation for the midpoint of a, of a line or the formula for the midpoint of a line, right? So we just find in the midpoint of MN. And as we know, the midpoint, you just say 
x1 plus x2 you're just taking the average of the x's and the average of the y's so for this question here it will be let, let's start with m first so 3 plus negative 1 divided by 2 and for the y's it will be 2 plus 4 divided by 2. So this positive and negative, it, the negative sign wins out. So 3 minus 1 is 2, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. And then 2 plus 4 is 6, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So the midpoint or the center of the circle is 1, 3. So immediately, we have a piece of our answer of the equation of the circle and we could just go ahead and substitute it in from the general form and we could say well now we have x minus 1 squared plus y minus 3 squared and now all we need is the r squared but the thing is this right we just added a new piece of information, right? We just found the center of the circle. So let's add that information into our diagram and see how it helps us out. See, so the center is 1, 3. And now we need to find the radius of the circle. But we know the radius is just the length from the center to the circumference, right? So this is our radius here. This is our radius here. So all we need to do is just find the length of one of these radii and then we we, we in business we have the, the last part of that equation of the circle and of course there's a formula again this is from your, your normal math there's a formula for the length of a line that we could apply here so I'll use the center but well, we obviously have to use the center I'll use the center and I'll use M just because there's the two positives let's just stay away from the negative number just because it leads to some, it usually leads to a little bit of trouble. So let's do CM, the length of this line here, and I'll write out the equation is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And again, it doesn't matter which one you choose as x2 and y, um, x2 and y2 and x1 and y1. You just have to be consistent. So I'm going to start with 3 minus 1. So 3 minus 1 squared plus it would have to be 2 minus 3 now. 2 minus 3 squared. And let's just go ahead and finish up here. We have this will give us 2 squared plus negative 1 squared. So what we end up with here is the square root of 4 plus 1, which is equal to the square root of 5. And remember what this length cm is. This length is the radius. So our radius is the square root of 5. But for the equation of the circle, we're not putting in the radius alone, we're putting in the radius squared. So if we square r, let's just do it down here in red, r squared, then we square in root 5. Right, we square in root 5, which is just 5. So our equation of the circle, we could now put it in here as 5 here. And this in red is our entire equation of the circle. x minus 1 squared plus y minus 3 squared is equal to 5. And there you have it. as the equation of the circle and we see how the diagram helps us out. Let's move on to the last question here on this circle question and see how, how it how it's good okay so now we're on to the second part of this question here 
and it says to find the equation of the tangent to the circle at the point negative 1 comma 6 and unfortunately we've reached one of these situations here so let's get the diagram right let me copy this diagram and bring it across onto the other page and let's see something here right negative 1 comma 6 is the point p they they asking us about but the point n is negative 1 comma 4 so how could negative 1 comma 6 even lie on the circle when negative 1 comma 4 is on the diameter or on the circumference i should say and this here is just an error in the question on cxc's part it should have been p negative 1 comma 4 i mean mistakes happens everybody make everybody makes mistakes it's kind of kind of bad to be making them you know for a regional exam but um we, we we gotta live with it and and do what we have to do right so let's see what goes what was happening how are we gonna so, um solve this question here right what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna change this to the appropriate um, value which should be negative one comma four and in fact we should change the p let's just let's just change the the entire thing from p you're basically saying n negative one comma four so we find in the tangent the equation of the tangent at n so again let's add this information to our sketch the tangent line looks like this And what do we know about when a tangent meets a radius of a circle? Well, when that happens, the angle formed is 90 degrees. So what does that mean? <laughs> well, that means that we're dealing with perpendicular lines. So essentially, we need to find the perpendicular gradient for our radius so let's work through that and see what happens right so the gradient of our radius let's just write out the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and again the numbers don't matter which one you use first just as long as you remain consistent so I'm going to say 1 minus negative, sorry, 3 minus 4, 3 minus 4 divided by 1 minus negative 1. And once we work this out here, 3 minus 4 is negative 1 over 1 plus 1 is 2. So the radius, the gradient of the radius is negative a half and because the tangent is perpendicular to the radius right so mt for the tangent is perpendicular to mr for the radius therefore mt is equal to the negative reciprocal of mr and if that confuses you very simply explained we just flip the fraction so from 1 over 2, we flip it to 2 over 1, or just 2, and we change the sign. So from negative to positive, and that's what negative reciprocal means. Flip the fraction, change the sign, and that's it there. So that is the gradient of our graph, oh, sorry, of our, of our tangent. We have a point on the tangent, which is negative 1 comma 4. So we could find the equation of the tangent. So we say here using mt for tangent equal to and n negative 1 comma 4. We could use our usual formula here y minus y1 equal to m x minus x1. 
and we substitute everything in right so y minus 4 is equal to 2 x minus negative 1 and we just work it down so this will be 2 by x plus 1 so we have y minus 4 equal 2x plus 1 y will be equal to 2x when the negative 4 goes over it becomes positive 4 plus 1 is 5 and that there is our equation of the tangent to the circle at point n not p n so that brings an end to this question here um like usual guys if you made it this far i'd extend i'd like to extend a sincere thanks to you and i would also like to hope that you were able to learn something and get something out of this video if you did find this video um informative or helpful in any sort of way consider giving it a like um and also you could consider subscribing i'm gonna be putting out a few videos on multiple choice questions for the the ad maths exam they're gonna be my own multiple choice questions but they're gonna be modeled after the cxc questions so still think they will be of use to you to help you prepare for that exam too so you could consider subscribing if you want to see some of those videos as well and yeah so um with all that being said i'll end off this video here again i would like to wish you good luck ahead of your exam tomorrow and I will see you in the next video.